I hit record a job, you can't ignore it. I'm transforming now, these cars and planes, I'm always boarding. Just out touring down in Charlotte, like I play for Hornets. When I'm performing, never boring, now you can't afford it. Champagne, Perrier, finish friends on my face. Looking like I'm from the D, D's no Cartier. Pockets deep, 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 bro. I can make it in my seat, bro. Do you and do me, bro. Making noise, use a beat, bro. What is going on? What is going on? Cowboys Nation, we are back with another one. Captain Rob, what is going on? And we got a special guest today. What's going on, Captain Rob? <laughs> what it do, baby? What it do? Happy Friday. Have, happy Easter weekend, everybody. I know, man. It's, it's such a good Friday. Happy yeah. Easter to everybody. We got a special guest today. Defensive end out of Stephen F. Austin slash Baylor. My guy, Marjay Smith. What's going on, man? Let me give you the hand clap. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, what's going on, man? What's going on, brother? I think it's, I think it's, I think you're muted right now. Brother, you, you muted? muted. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's good, bro? What's going on? How much, man? I'm out here. I think it's blanking out. You're cutting in and out. Yeah, it's cutting out. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's all good. It was good earlier, so we're good. We're good. Yeah. I can hear you now. All right, that's good. That's good. What's up, Captain Rob? What's up? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you All clear. Right. All right, you yeah, can talk a little bit. Good, good, man. <laughs> I here chilling with the family right now, man. Just hey, living life, still staying in, uh, staying in shape, and just hey, waiting on that call. I know, call. right, man? It's it's so awesome to be able to have an opportunity to play in the NFL, to play in college. This is everybody's dream. It is so awesome to, to be able to get you on this show, man. Like the, at this weekend right now, on Easter Day weekend, that just goes to show how badly you want it, man. And it, it's, the energy's there, man. What you think about that, Rob? Hey, man. Uh, you know, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited to talk to a future NFL star right here, right? You know, hey, when you make it big, don't forget, don't forget the little guys, right? I got you. I got everybody. I'm gonna take care of everybody for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. big time, big time. Yeah, That's man. why I say, you know, you know, you can definitely like just chime us in on like, you know, how it all started because the thing is, just like I said, like it, it's everybody's dream to be able to play in the NFL, and sometimes, you know, you you have to put in that grind day in and day out. So you can just let us know how it all started. Let us know who you are, Cowboys Nation. I'm sure everybody want to know, you know, what you're about, brother. Uh, how the football thing started? Yeah, yeah. How yeah. Started. All right, um, yeah. I probably started playing football in like fourth grade. Uh, my stepdad uh, introduced me honestly to football, and I started playing in like fourth grade, and I played all the way up and been playing ever since. And so, um, I was able to uh, bless to get some offers out of uh, high school to go play some college football. I was offered by Baylor, Stephen F. Austin. Uh, I got offered by Oklahoma State to play receiver and tight end. Okay. And I had, wow. Uh, well, I ain't gonna say I had some offers, but I had some other teams hit me up and stuff like that. But I feel like I probably just rushed the process. But hey, it was a blessing though. I ended up in the situation I'm in now. I'm at Stephen F. Austin. I just graduated from there not too long ago. Got a degree. Congratulations! Congratulations! Just to the draft right now. Just yeah. working, staying dedicated. So That's what made what made awesome. you um what made you what made you pick defensive end over wide receiver and tight end? I'd rather hit people than get hit. Yes, sir. Big fact. I, I yes, feel sir. the same way. Let me get let me give you the air horn on that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
that's how that's how I always was, man. I I never really was the offense type of guy. I played linebacker too, Marge, all throughout high school, all throughout little league. So I like to hit people. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. But how, 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 how tall you, Marge? School was awesome though. I'm six six. Six six. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta get your measurables right. Six six. How much <laughs> you weigh? Uh, I'm about two twenty right now. Two twenty. Okay. Okay. Ask um, me. and then what was your uh, uh, what what was your rating coming out of high school? Were you a three oh, star? Three star. Three, three star. Okay. Man, that's huge. That's huge. Okay. So, so coming what, out of Texas, though. Yeah. Uh, what made what made you what made you pick Stephen F. Austin over Baylor and over Oklahoma? Uh, honestly, I went to Baylor first, and I transferred to Stephen F. Austin. I was at Baylor for a year, and I left right before the uh, football season started. Okay. Right on. Um, and then how how did you do your uh, how did you do your senior? Year? What, what, what you know? Tell us, tell us a little about your stats. Well, sack numbers. Man, I, um, my senior year ended up cut short in college. Uh, I ended up getting a blood clot halfway through the season. Didn't know where okay. it came uh-huh. from and that, but I still I ended up with like five and a half sacks. Okay. Probably five. Yeah. I said I think I had like five sacks to end the season with, but that was only yeah. halfway through the season. I was still cooking, man. You're but still cooking. Yeah. I'm yeah. still yeah. rolling. Yeah. Shoot, man, it's so awesome to be able to have that opportunity. I mean, playing with Baylor. So, is there was there a reason why you uh, switched schools? Because I know, like a lot of people, a lot of um athletes, they end up switching schools. You know, Baylor to going to Stephen F. Austin. Was there something that was behind that? Uh, it wasn't any like, you know, what I'm saying playing time or nothing like that. Because I was before I left Baylor, I was a linebacker. I was like a two linebacker. I was in a rotation playing behind the dude who's in the league right now. So mm-hmm. it wasn't nothing like that. It was just family issues. Wanted to get close to home. Yes, okay, I was getting home sick, something like that. Okay, right, right on, right on. Right. That's awesome, oh, man. Awesome, that's, that's dope. Um, yeah. So, so, all right. So, defensive end, right? So, mm-hmm. what's what's what, what's what's your repertoire looking like, right? You a spin move guy? You a spin move? Speed? Height? I do everything. Power? I everything. do everything. Oh, good answer. Yeah. Brother. Good everything. Answer. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm awesome. gonna catch you with the speed because you're gonna be like, man, you're not that big. You're not gonna power me down. So right. I hit you with a little speed. So you think I'm gonna run around you the whole game? Right. And then I double back, hit you with a power move. Then okay. after that, hit you with a little spin, a little shake. I like to mix it up, man. I'm gonna okay. What's your uh, what what what's your what's your favorite move? My favorite move, I like to dip and rip. I like to beat you dip off the ball and just dip under your arm, man. Dip under the arm. Yeah. See, the good thing is about you, man, is it, it seemed like, you know, by watching you some of your tape, like you got that closing speed, you got that get off. That's the thing when it comes down to that pass rush, because we know when it comes down to the NFL, it's a passing league. So that's where you're going to be able to make your money. But let me ask you. So as far as coverage, can you be able to cover two as well? Because a lot of these schemes in the NFL now, I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're dropping in coverage as well as getting after the passer, bro. Mm-hmm. I feel like I can do everything. I was a guy who was, I had to drop back and prepare pass coverage in the defense I was playing last year. I can run toe-to-toe with most of the running backs in the league that I feel like. So, honestly, shoot, I feel like I can do it all. Honestly, shoot. With a, if you go watch my 40, you're going to be able to tell I can. I got some rollers on me for sure. Okay, what's, uh, hey, okay, what's the 40 time? <laughs> I clocked in a 447 at my pro day. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, that's okay, yo. Hey. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> 447. Y'all got to go check the video out, man. It's on my YouTube. Is yeah. it right here? Six. Oh Lord. Six. Yeah, six, I got. I got. Yeah, some of the tape that he had or whatever. That's pretty awesome. I had to post it on there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A little bit of the tape. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So, so this is the first time I'm getting to see it. So let me let me go and take yeah. a look. Yeah, big time, man. It, yeah, it's so it's so awesome though. Cause so when you're thinking about like Stephen F. Austin, is there was there when you did your pro day? Cause you did your pro day um last week or two weeks ago? I did it Tuesday. This Tuesday. Okay. Okay, so it was was it like two like three or four other people there doing a pro day with it you? It was four of us all together. It mm-hmm. was me, another defensive lineman, a safety, and our punter. Oh, okay. Oh, a punter. Dang, y'all got a punter too. Yeah, yeah we all trying yeah. to get in there, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Cause the thing is, man, all it takes is just one team to to, to, to see you, and then next thing you know, you in there. You know what I mean? Cause right. I think that uh, what's the what's the guy's name? Um, Xavier Gibson. Yeah, it's my dog. Okay, Xavier Gibson, and I think it's another guy named Browner Brown. BJ Thompson. Playing, uh, okay, okay, BJ Thompson. Yeah, he playing for Kansas City. Uh huh. 
okay gotcha gotcha that's what's up man see that's what i'm saying and, and and the good thing is brother like they're always watching and it's good that you you know you locked in and focused i mean when you did your pro day was you nervous at first everybody say that they was nervous i was so nervous i, I think i get like an anxious nervous bro like, i be so anxious to go and then i end up getting too nervous i be feeling kind of yeah. weak in my stomach sometimes but hey yeah. after i got done running everything else was i was good Hey, but you ran four four seven, so I mean that, that had to be a good nerves, right? That's what's up, man. Yeah, um, man, it definitely yeah. is good. Yeah, so I definitely so, love the tape thus far, man. Yeah, so, big time, big sure. time. That's why. That's why I asked, man. Like a lot of these teams in the NFL, I mean, there it's so many different schemes. Four three. So you feel good about playing in a four three or the three four? It really don't matter. Yeah, it really don't matter. I didn't play it in both schemes before. So. Okay. Okay. Honestly, you just put me on the field. I'm gonna go ball out. I'm gonna learn the playbook and I'm ready to go. Yeah, dang. who's the, who's the uh, toughest competition you played? The toughest any, competition I played. Mm. Any names we would know? Like, 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 like what, what's been like your biggest game essentially? I'll say my biggest game was probably against. Uh, I don't know. I had some crazy games, but I'll say I like the Alcorn game. That was one of the most fun games I had. Man, yeah. chasing around that quarterback, he was a little quick, fast dude. So yeah, 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 yeah. that was fun. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that was the game where you scored. I think was that the game? I think that was the game I scored was. Oh, that it was, was like a Warner fumble. game. Warner game, okay. Yeah, Warner. I think that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. I'm telling you, man. That's I said. It's, it's such a blessing. So, as far as your family, do you have anybody else in your family that are athletes as well? Um, I have cousins, older cousins who uh, went to go play basketball. Uh, my uncle, he went played at Kansas State a while back. I had a cousin who played at University of Louisiana Monroe. I have a cousin right now who is at North Texas right now. And sure who mm-hmm. else? I have girl cousins who play. Most of my friends was basketball. We all tall. Right. So mm-hmm. I was the one who just decided to go the other route and go play football. Yeah, you like, you, you like, you like <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it's nothing. It's nothing like football, man. Like that's that. I mean, I've all I played a little bit of basketball, but football was my main sport, man. That's just you know just the physicality in it. Like I, nice. you know, nice. being physical and getting away with it and not getting in trouble. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can't get any better than that. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it was out for me. What about you, Rob? Hey, man. Hey, you know me, man. I love football. Um, I was a tweener. I was a defensive end, right? So okay. like, you know, I'm six feet and I didn't run no four four seven. Right. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? I just I, I just kind of had to survive, right? Um, but you know, I did my thing. Um, you know, um, you know, you know, captain leadership wise. That's I, I was all, I was like the intangible guy, right? You know, okay. gave, gave my little brother, you know what I'm saying, took him underneath my wing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about your intangibles and then and then I want to get to your weaknesses. I'm not I'm not, I'm not gonna let you off the hook me here now. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, so like what 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 else what else what else do you bring to the table? Um, uh, I feel like I'm a- I feel like on the field, I'm a very motiva- motivational guy. Like I like to bring all my teammates up and have them ready to play for one goal. Because at the end of the day, we all got the same goal. We're trying to win this Absolutely. championship. So I was always the guy in the locker room trying to bring everybody up, get everybody together early in the morning, have the music bumping, everybody ready to rock out, ready to go practice and have a good day. Yes, then sir. off the field, I feel like I have great leadership. Like I represent my family. I represent the organization. I represent everybody around me. So I don't want to just... Right crash out do nothing crazy to you know what i'm saying to disrespect right. my family and make them look bad so i was always that guy who kept that in mind and yes, i feel sir. like yeah. that's a great thing to bring to an organization when they know they can trust you on and off the field they don't got to worry about you not doing your yeah. job or showing up late i was always the guy who's gonna be there on time you can depend on me right. so i feel like hey. that was one of the great things for me and it and, cool. and it seemed that it seemed like that coach uh from stephen f austin you could tell in the interview when he was talking about you, you can just hear feel his energy. He seems like a people's a, a player's type of coach. Do you think that, that that's the case? Yeah. Yeah, I can tell I think man. He really he is. Like, he, like, he looks out for us a lot. Not gonna lie. Like hey, if he can help us out in any way, he's gonna try to help us out for sure. For so sure. Yeah. I respect him for that for sure. Shout out to Coach Carthon. Yeah, big time, man. Big time. Because that's why I say, man, like you, even a lot of these players, shoot, if they end up playing in the XFL, if they play in the Canadian League, the NFL, just being able to just get there, man, it's just it's just a, a blessing. You know what I'm saying? And me right, and Captain so. Rob was talking about that, man. It's just, you know, a lot of people can't be able to have this opportunity. You know what I'm saying? So, right, right. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, – so six six two twenty, right? So defensive end in the league, right? Obviously, first look at you, you're like, okay, cool. He's he's a little slight, right? Mm-hmm. So let's talk about your weaknesses. Let's talk about where you think you can improve, where where teams might be looking at you, like, hey, I love that four four. I love that. I love that height. But where can he get better? 
Well, I definitely need to put on some more weight. That's been one of the big things. I feel like I can probably pass the eye test because I do. I am a little ripped up and like mm-hmm. I have gotten bigger. But once mm-hmm. I step on the scale, I feel like that's one of my weaknesses right there. I do need to gain weight. I feel like I am good at uh, handling the edge, like setting the edge and stuff like that. But honestly, yeah. I feel like just me gaining weight, that's going to help me be able to stand, stay on the field longer and be able to play against bigger guys who I know who's probably going to be 10 times, probably not 10 times stronger than me, but there will definitely be some guys who will be stronger than me with the yeah. same length of arms and everything like that. So right. I just feel hey, like but, the weight thing is one of my main things. Yeah, shoot. But the thing is, man, when you 6'6 six, six and you you tall, you tall, long arms, you got a lot of room to grow. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Off-season peanut butter. I mean, hey, look, man, you're going to be, I say about 20, 15, 20 pounds. You'll be in there, bro. Your body yes, size, that's going to yeah. be easy work. You know what I'm saying? So, so like, has your, has your diet started to change yet? Have you uh, have you gotten with like a nutritionist? Have you, have you started I to definitely do has. Uh, I reached out to a nutritionist who's been helping me out lately, and she's been mm-hmm. getting me right for sure. Like, I feel like my body is like, I don't have a lot of fat on my body, and that's something right. I need to add to my body, too, because it's healthy for your body at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah big time. Big Absolutely. time. I, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a former nutritionist and personal trainer as well. Right. Okay. And, and like um, I, I've, tra- I've trained a few athletes and the most I tell them is when, when it comes to gaining weight, it's about consistency. Right. Mm-hmm. It's about consistency in the weight room and consistency in your eating. Right. Uh, like even when you're not hungry, sometimes, hey, yo, this is for my future. I got to eat. Right. Um, but you can't just you can't just load up on the peanut butter, peanut butter sandwiches. You got you got to eat smart. Right. Because you don't want right. you don't want to gain fat. Fat. Right. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's, you got you got to eat the carbs. You got to eat when you're not hungry. You got to you got to say I'm eating four thousand calories a day. And that's and that's all there is to it. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You gotta, whatever you got to do to get it in, whether that's protein shakes, whether that's your spaghetti dinners, your spaghetti breakfasts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Shoot, but hey, Rob, you already know when you when you eating a lot. I mean, that keeps your metabolism up. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It, it exactly. shocks it, so you want to keep keep that going. You can either gain muscle or you know lose body fat, whatever you're trying to do. But you know, eating right. eating good is very good. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, right. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. So cool. as far as far as the NFL, right? Is there anybody that you try to mold your game after? Any athletes? Anybody that you look up to? I don't feel like I just try to mold my game after anybody. I feel like I take a little bit from everyone who like all the great pass rushers. Like I like Matt Crosby, I like Michael Parsons. I try to take a little hey. bit out of both of their games and like try to put it together with mine and hey. Yeah. Yeah. I just try to mix it all up together. Like it's a learning yeah. experience every time you get to watch the football game. So I try to take a little bit of something from everybody because it's just I like to learn. If you don't tell me, I'll steal it from you and just yeah. There you, right that. hey, there you hey, go. Look, that's how you got to be. You got to be a sponge. That's what's going to, right. and you can learn from others, but still do your thing. That's how I am when I, even when I'm creating, I always want to just keep learning. If you keep learning, that's how you, that's what makes you the best. And if you can be open like that, bro, you can get so, so far. But, you know, you mentioning guys like Michael Parsons, that dude's a beast, man. That's my guy. Yes. That's my guy that's right there. He's a beast for sure. Yeah, yeah. And it's just <laughs> awesome because, you know, that pass rush, just like you said, the dip moves, the rip moves, doing little things like that. I think they call it the ghost rush. You know, ghost yeah, rush and ghost stuff rush. like that. Yeah, man. So it, it, it's awesome. So many different mechanics and things, nuances that you got to learn as far as pass rush. And I know that they were teaching so much, you know, throughout college, but I'm sure mm-hmm. once you get to the NFL, it's going to be a lot of new, new things that you're learning. And just hearing right, that you're right. saying that you're a sponge, that's everything, bro. And, 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 and honestly, it's, it's, it's everything and it's just it's, it's more than just for your game too it's it's more for your mental and being coachable man like it shows your maturity shows your accountability right um you know you're a young guy right you know a lot of young guys they don't know nothing right mm-hmm. and that's okay right you have more room to grow and learn right and that's what coaches want to do you, like all coaches want to do is coach right and, and if you can find yourself to be coachable day in day out and do the right things yeah you're be successful man Right. Have you had any? Um, have you had any early projections on where you might go? Or? I have no clue. I've been betting on myself this whole time. I'm just waiting on that phone call. Do you have? Do you have, a, do you have a manager or um, an agent? No, nah, I'm still looking for an agent. If y'all okay. know anybody, tell them. Hey, just okay, hit right me up, man. I'm trying to lock yeah, in with somebody. Yeah, I'm rushing it. I ain't rushing it to where I'm just rushing to anybody, but hey, I'm yeah. willing to talk to a lot of people right now. Okay, See, right and that's the thing, man. Like, the thing is about, like, the Dallas Cowboys and everybody in the NFL, you want to have people that's hungry. 
You right. want to have those kind of people. The better scouts, you got to go find guys that's hungry, their background. That's why I always say, um, does anybody else play sports? That's why I was asking you that. You know what I'm saying? Little questions like that because one thing about me, when I do breakdowns, when I do film sessions, I always look at bloodlines. Um, do they play other sports? Um, how hungry is this person? And it just seems like, you know, with your energy, your demeanor, hey, man, hey, look, it seems like, you know, you're ready to win, baby. <laughs> got to. Trying to get paid, man. Got to go yeah. out there and ball. Yeah. yeah. Spe speaking of, so speaking of winning, right, um, you said you used to be, used to be a, uh, used to be a Cowboys fan. Uh, who's your favorite team now? I don't have a favorite team. I love okay. all 32. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I heard that. Good answer. Good answer. All right. <laughs> So let's just say, let's just say um, the stars align and the Cowboys draft you, right? On the way. Hey, ready no to questions go. asked. I'm on the way. On the way. <laughs> what do you, what, where do you, where do you think, uh, from outside perspective, where do you think, where do you think the Cowboys are lacking? What, where do you think, um, like, what do you think you could do to help us get to an NFC Championship game that has been evading us for 28 years and that and that Super Bowl ring? What can you do for us? Um, I don't think it's the lack of players or talent or anything like that. I just feel like they just need a little bit of, I'm the guy who's going to bring the motivation. Like in crunch time, I'm the person who's like, you can depend on me. And then I want to know if I can depend on you. So that's going to be mm -hmm. one of the main things that's going to help us both out, that we can both yeah. trust each other while we in this situation on the field. And I feel like right. that'll bring a lot, make everybody play a lot harder, honestly. That's just to me. And that's something we really need. We need we need we need someone in the locker room to hold everybody accountable. Yes. Right. Um, yeah. Like if you're if, yeah. if you're if you're slacking, uh, if you're not doing the right things off the field, hey, where's Marge at? Right. Hey, Marge, go get yeah. go get Lil Young. In, right. right? He, he, he's messing up. Right. Um, right. You know that's and that's something big. And like you know, I'm, I'm sure you heard culture issues in uh, in, in Cowboy Land, right? Mm -hmm. And you know when you win when you win 12 games three years in a row, and like you've been. You've been a plus five hundred or so team for the past, you know, you know, two decades, whatever, right? Um, it's it's kind of hard to say that you don't have culture, but like mm -hmm. we don't have championship culture, right? Right. Right. So what are you gonna do? Like, like I, I'm looking for those players that's gonna that's gonna hold Michael Parsons accountable, right? right. Yeah. Like, Yo, Michael, hey, why are you disappearing late late in the season? What's up, right? Um, hey, me? Jack. Two picks in yeah. the playoff game, bro. What's, what's going on? Like somebody needs to be able to talk to him and he needs to be able to, you know what I'm saying, take it as a man. Like not me just talking to him crazy, getting you know, on you talk to you crazy. It's just like sure. come on, bro, get it together. Like, okay. hey, and I'm down for you, you down for me. Let's rock out, let's go ball. Let's not yeah, make sure. no, none of these crazy mistakes and none of that. Let's just go do it. Hey, I love that energy. Home. I love I, that. Hey, energy. I love that energy, man. Cause the thing is, like, regardless how old you are, it don't matter how old mm -hmm. you are. I mean, you could be a young, a young player or a veteran coming in there there are players on our team right now i mean you you need those type that type of energy you know what i'm saying so whether if it's on defense if it's on special teams how you feel about special teams are you could you possibly be a special teams guy because you know that's that's critical too when, when you know getting into the nfl i've been on special teams since i've been in college running down on kickoff going to go block punts i'm down to do it all whatever they put me at i'm going i'm gonna do it for sure what's your what's your awesome. thoughts on what's your thoughts on the new uh kickoff uh, rule have you heard about it I never, I ain't read up on it, but I did see it. That looked a little weird. I ain't gonna lie. That's it, something it, I'm gonna have to get yeah, used to. Yeah, I don't know. It's That's gonna be, it's gonna be weird to everybody. But like, I was, I was telling my friend the other day, the NFL always comes out with different rule changes, and the first, the first uh, reaction for everybody is like, oh my god, I don't like that. What's going on? Da, da, da. But then like a year goes by, we don't even notice it no more. You know what I mean? Right. It's just another part of the game. You know, you just got, you just got to deal with the punches. Yeah, man. I just keep on switching up stuff every year, so you really got to just move with them. Right, right. Yeah, big facts. Let me get to my man Dwayne. Shout out to my man Dwayne. He said, uh, "JC asked him his target weight. Uh, he would like to be at them offensive linemen ain't small." Um, I honestly want to play at like a 240, 235 range. That's just yeah, that's me. That's why I think I don't want to get too heavy to where it slow me down because my body isn't really just built for me to be a 240 type of guy. I feel like my body is a 232. 230, 240 range type of guy. I'll say that. Because, I mean, because the height, the height, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're so tall. So you can be, I, I really honestly, I mean, 240. Hey, bro, I mean, you running a four, you said a 447? 447. Man, I'm, I'm sure. Hey, look, and, and the thing is, coaches, you got to be able to see that closing speed. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's why I say, and I wanted to ask you, bro, how do you feel like, you know, when you're in college and you get that sack with that closing speed and you see the crowd going crazy? Can you please explain to us that feeling, you know, once you uh get in a sack and you closing in, bro? 
Man, it motivates me a lot. It's like, man, quarterbacks, it'd be funny to me because they think they can get away from me. They think like, oh, this is a little DM trying to come get me. They try to do all the little juking and stuff. But I got yeah. long arms and I'm fast. Yeah, right. So think about yeah. me chasing you down and you thinking you way faster than me and the whole time I'm just right behind you. So yeah. that's, it's very fun to me, honestly. And I like to see my teammates turn up when I make plays too. So we all just on the field lit, man. Yeah, that's hey, what's up, one thing, one thing about the you know the whole weight thing, and it's good that my guy Dwayne you know mentioned that and stuff like that because just like you know we, we're all thinking, we all know that like you know having a good size and being able to set the edge. A lot of these defenses, you know, setting the edge, making sure everything stays inside. So I understand where you're coming from, you know, being able to gain weight and things like that because you want to make yourself versatile to be able to do everything. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. what it's all about. That's what it's all about. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Right. Yeah, let me ask you a question. So what if I'm like, okay, um, 6'6", 220, you know. I want my, what if I'm like, hey, Marjay, I'm going to draft you, but I want you to switch over to tight end. I'm going to do it. Me? I'm going to do it. No questions asked. No questions asked. No questions mm -hmm. asked. Whatever. If they tell me to go play safety, I'm going to go find me a trainer. Go train with him for a little bit, learn the little yeah. techniques that, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got their own techniques that everybody right. don't know about. So right. I'm going to yeah. find those little techniques and I'm going to work yeah. hard at it and I'm going to try to get on the field. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just, yeah. just, just the rest of the player just wants to play football. That's what's up, man. Right. Hey, look, man, scouts love to hear that, bro. Coaches love to hear that type of it's energy. Just, just the love and some people say, I'm going to stay at DN or I'm going to stay at uh, wide receiver. Or I'm going to stay at, you know what I'm saying? That's just so awesome to be open. You're a true athlete. That's awesome. Right. <laughs> So as far as like music, like when you're playing and is there any type of music that you listen to, you know, before the game, pregame? I really to listen to my brothers, like the local artists. Like I won't say that local, but I have brothers who make music and I mostly listen to them on game day. Like that's like okay. my motivation because they tell the mm -hmm. stories. Basically to me, they telling me about their they life and everything like that. And then I have brothers who have made songs like that's basically dedicated to me to make me keep going and keep me going every day. So that's who I jam most of the time, my brothers, man. That's what's up, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's awesome, yeah. man. That's the, yeah. that's why I say me, man. Like, family is so important, man. So so your mom, your mom and your dad motivated you? Because my mom, she motivated right. me in so many things in life, man. That's why I, you know, just hearing things like that is awesome. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, you got anything else, Rob? Nah, yeah, man. Um... Uh, hey, yeah, I'm excited for you, man. Um, yeah, you know, appreciate that. You know, so, so let's talk. I mean, I don't want to put like you know worst case situations in your head, but let's just say you don't get that call, right? Um, have you looked at other leagues? Um, the UFL is coming up, right? That's big. Um, you know, Canadian, European, things like that. Um, are you going to keep on going or, or is this... I'm definitely going to keep going. Like, it's there's no reason for me to stop now. I didn't bet on Absolutely. myself this long. I might as well just keep on going, keep working at it. Eventually, Absolutely. somebody's going to see the talent in me and they're going to believe in me and they're going to come get me. Yeah. Yeah, I just have yeah, faith in that. That's how I'm... What'd you get your degree, by the way? Health science. Awesome, man. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And what do you want to do with that? Not sure yet. Not sure yeah. yet. Hey. But hey, I do hey. got the degree to lean back on, so hey. Absolutely. I got to do my research, figure out what I really want to do with that. Do you, do you, have, do you have a message to, to the younger audience out there? Uh, I just want to say, our boys and ladies and gentlemen, just keep your head down, keep working, don't let nobody tell you that you can't do it. Like, I've been on myself this whole time, it, so it wouldn't hurt for you to do it for yourself, man, because some people are not going to believe in the dream that you have, so you have to make them believe it. So yeah. just keep on working, keep grinding, and show them that you're dedicated to doing this, and they'll eventually fall along. Yeah. Hey, look, man. Hey, look, man. I bang with you, Marjay. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, boss. Yeah. Yeah, man, I bang with you, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, it's so awesome to be able to root for people like you. That's why I say me, personally, and I'm going to I'm gonna have to do a, a full JC film session on you, bro. Let's you know do it. I, I think you might need oh, to. Oh, we got to do it. We got to do it. Yeah, yeah check, it, it. check out my work, bro, because I, I, I do some dynamite type of content. So I'm definitely okay. going to, you know, dig dig a little, a way more deeper, you know what I'm saying, and, uh, Hold it down for you. You already know. Right. Right. Appreciate it's, that. Yeah, it's so it's so it's so awesome. But as far real quick though, as far as Texas, like, so you're on the east side of Texas, west side of Texas. I'm in East Texas. I'm in deep East Texas. I'm probably like 25 minutes away from Shreveport, Louisiana. 
Okay, okay. So, so I know you got you got a little bit of cowboy fan in you, Don. I mean, yeah. I know you like some of the players. I got Sixers you know in saying? you, man. You got to know I'm <laughs> always root for the Sixers team. There, hey, so. yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah. I, I think I heard that um, Houston Texans. I think they was at your pro day, right? They definitely was. I think. Yeah, I who was all your pro day? Who was all your pro day? The only thing that really came was the Texans because the Big 12 was having their uh, interviews at the time. So most of the teams was up there, but we will get all our films sent out to all the other teams and everything and the scouts like that. So I'm just waiting on that call to come in. That's all. Just gotta be yeah. patient, man. Just gotta yeah. be patient. Uh, yeah, man. Cause it's it's awesome because I mean, when I went to, to Texas, bro, I had such a good time. I went to the Cowboys stadium. We went to the practice facility. I'm not sure. Have you been to the stadium yet? Yeah, I played in the stadium in high school. That's awesome. Okay, that's fire. That's fire. Because I know some people play in the practice facility too. At the, no, the I play in, in, uh, in the stadium. Cowboy Stadium. So, yeah. <laughs> what, 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 uh, what was it for? Like, state championship? No, nah, it was playoffs. You know, yeah. down here in playoffs, we play the playoffs in the Texan Stadium and the Cowboy yeah. Stadium. Like, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's a great experience for sure. Yeah. yeah. Hey, bro, when we, me and my wife went to Texas, shout out to my wife, Jazz. Uh, she said, uh, "Deep, deep East Texas, a hey, country, country." <laughs> nah, for real, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, big time. Like, hey, bro, we had such a good time. The only thing that was kind of shaking me up a little bit in Texas is everybody drives fast, bro. Oh yes, <laughs> like everybody, every- yeah, bro, everybody. God, they going ninety miles an hour, hundred miles an hour. Everybody, bro. Facts. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, it was good. It was good eating. The people there are so nice. That's why I can't wait to get back down to Texas, man. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying? I can you know, visit you sometime. If, if when you're, you're down here next time, just give me a text. Give me a call, yeah. man. Just pull up on me, for sure. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you go around a good, some good spots. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, too, my family is in, um, my family's in Baton Rouge. How far are you from Baton Rouge? Uh, I'm like eight, nine hours from Baton Rouge. I got a, oh, uh, okay. a really close friend who's out there right now, my dog, Prince Pines, man. He's going to be getting drafted this year too shout out to him man okay right on yeah yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely big time. big time all right let's see shout out to my man Dwayne. he said oh shoot uh you know what uh D'Amico will do what he uh, oh you know what D'Amico will do with him oh D'Amico Ryan's yeah hey. yeah that's crazy hey, come get me come get hey. me that's crazy. That's all I gotta say come get me come yeah get me. yeah that's why yeah me. definitely gotta keep it wide open so as far as the, the, the draft are you are you go, are you gonna be in Texas or you know where, where you gonna be at bro I'm gonna be back home I'm not sure if I'm gonna get you know what I'm saying I'm just gonna watch the draft with my family you know what I'm saying we're just gonna sit back chill Mm-hmm. and just wait on my name to be called wait on their phone to ring man just keep praying and keep yeah just stay prayed up man that's all hey, i can do man and hey, we're, we're, we're all we're all right there with you yeah i appreciate big that time. boss big yeah, time big time yeah man it's so it's so exciting we definitely going keep in touch man instagram um Sir. twitter all of that man so awesome to be able to you know have you on and i'm sure you you know you'll be able to tap in with us and stuff like right. that and so i know it's easter has been kind of a random time that we on right now but i mean these type of situations right here means so much and i thank you man for you know tapping in with us and just getting to know us and we getting to know you because i know the journey that you're going to be going through and blessings to you you know you putting in that hard work and just making sure that you just stay motivated keep god first and everything's going to come for you bro for sure yes sir appreciate that boss uh, hey yes. yo marjorie appreciate your time man yes, sir y'all have a good one man appreciate y'all right, backing me again bro all right, all right brother i'll talk to you bro yes sir yeah see you all right, let's see, man. Okay. Let me... All right, y'all. Shout out to everybody, Cowboys Nation, man. It's so good to be able to have him tap in with us for this time. All right, man. Definitely hope he get that call, man. It's going to be huge, man. All right, let's see. Hey, shout out to Dwayne. He said, stay away from the Texans. They bar- they barbecue suck. Dallas will, will uh, market him better than what better that's what they do yeah man i know right i know that's why it's it's awesome man because i mean i've been checking out a lot of his work and what he's been doing and stuff like that and just being a guy that that athletic i mean with with uh our defense it's wide open you know what i'm saying you can be able to utilize this guy the better coaches can be able to get this guy going whether if it's on the defense special teams you could tell by this type of energy that's the kind of energy that we need with cowboys nation you want guys going out there to be hungry not caught up into all the bright lights in texas of captain rob because a lot of the people on our team they caught up in the bright lights we need those grinders guys that can go out there and grind day in and day out and one thing about him it seemed like he got that type of energy to do that Yo, he, he sounded like a man after my own heart, man. Like, you know, the accountability that he was talking about, 
right? The motivation, you know that, you know that, you know, I was I, I was that guy in high school, right? Um, you know, uh, just making sure people are doing the right thing, right? Um, all the time, mm-hmm. you know, um, and and that's just so important. That's and that's and that's just going towards the culture of what the Cowboys need, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I you can't have enough guys like and six 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 four four, bro. That is. That's, bro, that's, that's insane. That's yeah, world that's class athlete. Like he better yeah. be. He, man, someone's training that, that I'm him up. Yeah, six six four 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 forty, bro. That's that's amazing. And, yeah, and, and, exactly. he's, and he's a humble, he's a humble young dude. Uh, graduate with a degree. You know what I'm saying, doing all the right things. Um, fam, family man. I love it. I love it. Big time, man. That's why I say, man, with us, man, it's so much work that we got to do that's why we know we already know we're not getting caught up in all the stuff that people talking about with us hyping this thing we know we didn't lost so many players and it's a lot of questions when it comes down to our offense the defense what is mike mccarthy going to do what is mike zimmer going to do yes you bring in guys like eric kendricks but i just think that you have to bring in so much more talent the draft is not going to be enough captain rob you got to give me your mindset when it comes down to this whole team the everything bruh not bringing in a lot of talent is this team in a rebuild or are we just trying to or is it a mini rebuild bro you know what i'm saying to try to get ourselves so, in position but keep in mind we got a lot of people to sign we haven't signed them and we lost a lot of guys so <laughs> i don't got my shades on today dog <laughs> so i'm gonna go ahead and trade them to you dog. <laughs> the dallas cowboys are in a mini rebuild the writing's on the wall you yeah. can get on board with it you can you can you can get mad at it you can be happy with it the writing's on the wall they jerry jones has um more or less put his frustrations out with dak prescott and the coaching staff to the world by not signing him right and you know it's either this is a make or break year literally for our coach and our quarterback right um it is what it is we all love Dak. Dak's a second team all pro all pro player this year he had his best season of all, um, of, um, of his career but he mopped down the playoffs guys and yeah. and and, when, and we're, we're not we're not the we're not so the, I, I, hope oh, you, I hope you're ready to be slum for a while bro if that if 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 it comes if it goes down to it, if it goes down to us losing Dak Prescott, I hope you're going to be ready for. You you got to be humble for it, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's sure, all I'm saying. Because sure. it's a complete shift when you when Dak Prescott is gone because it's not easy to find quarterbacks. Even though I know it's a lot of guys out there. Uh, earlier you were talking to me about Trey Lance. We don't know much about this guy, but at the same time, you are absolutely correct. When you get to this situation now. If you continue to keep losing, if you're not stepping up in the biggest games, and I, like I said before, previous live streams, I've been fighting for this guy for a long time, bro. We all love Dak. We all been fighting for him, but you ha- like we know what we're getting with Dak. Like Dak's not gonna like go to another team and just all of a sudden get so much better than what he is. It's hard to get better than second team All Pro, right? There's that's there's, what I'm saying. J- J- so C- how do you how do you how do you let that go? How does J- C- how does that happen, bro? Sure. Uh, so there's there's several different blueprints on how you win a championship in um, in this league. You can either have two of the greatest quarterbacks of all time in Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, right? You either have your um, your cheap quarterback on his rookie deal, and then you load up around him. But what is not what has not been done is having basically um, um, a good quarterback, which Dak is, you know, good to great quarterback, basically argu- arguably from your you can rank him anywhere from five to 11 depending on how you feel whatever whatever right i mean it's top 10 quarterback in my book right but when you pay but when when you're paying let's just say let's just put difference call him the eighth best quarterback in the league when you're paying the eighth best quarterback in the league number one money it's hard to put players around him right and dak needs help that's 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 a fact and that's undisputed Right, every quarterback needs help. That's every quarterback, mm-hmm. every quarterback. So when you when you don't have when when you have a quarterback that's um, sixty million dollars, right? And yes, people are going to say, "Well, so Rob, why, why didn't you? Ex- why won't you extend him?" <coughs> what happens if we extend him for another four years, and four years from now we still haven't won a Super Bowl? Right? You can't say Dak hasn't had talent around him. We had we led the league in All Pro players last year. 
Love the league. Okay, so let me ask you this. So if you're going to, if you're thinking about, you know, uh, Dak Prescott being gone, so why would you sign Micah then? Why would you sign CD? Why won't you just do a complete reshift? You, because you, because Maybe you, possibly, you, I mean, I'm just, I'm just throwing this out there because I'm sure. trying to make an argument right now because everybody's been going all over the place. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even really, really know which direction I want to go, but this is right. another mindset to it. So because Micah, Micah, uh, Micah. So okay. Go yeah, you're good. Go so. If you were to give up Dak Prescott, right? So why would we keep Micah? Why would we keep CD? Why won't you go get a, a three first rounders, two first rounders for for Micah Parsons, two first rounders for CD, or a first rounder for CD, and rebuild the whole thing? Because they're young. Next, year, next couple of years, you might have your cap back. You might be clean. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna rebuild, you might as well just be, just clean it up. The, 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 That's the, deep. Well, the diff, the difference is the difference is um eight like seven eight years of age right they haven't they haven't had their second contract yet right they're, they're still on their rookie deals right you, you you don't michael parsons is a one of one right but cd lamb is cd lamb is considered one of one of, one of the five best receivers in the league right um if if, if cd lamb is about to turn 31 and we were in this position, I bet, like, yeah, it's time, it's time for him to go. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I'm about to start. I'm about to just start going ham on everybody. You say Michael Parsons is a one on one. And, you know, I do the breakdowns, bro. You already know I'm, that's me. But at the same time, you know, me and you balked before. We got that dog in this. When, whenever it's playoff time, where you at, Micah? Where you at? Straight I, up. Where you I at? Agree. I, I, I agree. I, I see you in the regular season, but I want to see you in the playoffs. Because if you right. want to get that bread, if you want to get that money, then step up in the most important times. That's all I'm saying. I'm so, not bad for nobody on this team no more, bro. We've been losing way too long. That's why with me, every time when I do every single breakdown, I want to show y'all bad plays and I want to show y'all good plays because I can easily overhype somebody. I can literally make y'all believe that somebody is super, super good. But I want y'all to see good plays and bad plays. I don't, I want, I don't, no, no in between, bro. No in between. You know what I'm saying? At this point right now, it's been way too many years. We got to know the truth from all of these players. They got to go out there and step up when it matters most, bro. I couldn't agree more to JC. Um, but you you have to build you have to build somewhere, right? And when you have a Micah and a CD, so like I believe I believe we we are good to go at four out of the five um, the five most important positions in football, right? Tyler Smith, the left tackle, if, if that's what we decide, right? That's still a question mark. So, well, I'll get back to that. I meant to ask you a question on that, too. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll get back to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we have back. the pass rusher. We have the hey, pass rusher. Hey, let me know if anybody want to tap in, too, with us. Um, You want to get anybody on, Rob? You know what I'm saying? See if they want to tap in with us. Yeah, we yeah. Have please, please, please. Yeah, if yeah, you guys want to come tap in with us, man, see what's good, man. I just want to get y'all uh, mindset on this Friday, on this good Friday, if y'all want to tap in. Yeah. You don't, you don't, have, to, you don't have to show your face. You can just do the audio. Yeah, it's um, been yeah, a minute. Please, hey, I would love, I would love to hear y'all's opinion on this. Case. Being thrilled, and look, we ain't even even talked too much because I remember after the show with John Mashoda, the show was over. He was John like going in. <laughs> he was going in, bro. He was going in on Jerry Jones's mindset, and I was liking it because at first I didn't know for sure if if, if he was going to tap in. He tap in with us a lot, but I didn't know for sure because it's been a lot of heat on Twitter, but. He started off this live stream and he pretty much was speaking like how we speak or you know speaking the mindset of all cowboys fans so i'm like all right in the jc lounge now you know what i'm yeah. saying you know what i mean because yeah you know, if it was a different kind of pivot I i'm sure you know cowboys nation would have probably gave him the press kit <laughs> right right i mean you yeah, know he's yeah. frustrated he's frustrated too just like we're, we're, all, we're all fans at the end of the day hey let we, me go to my man let me go to my man chocolate he said rob stop the goofy go ahead read it bro Rob, stop the goofy thought process. Your favorite team uh, don't have a uh, goddamn GM. That's the guy. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He, now he agrees with that, but I definitely <laughs> agree with Choctaw. But he he agrees with that too. But I'm I'm just on the mindset that he ain't gonna fire himself. He ain't so, firing himself. So yeah. Yeah, trust me. Um, uh, I think Jerry Jones. I think it was like two years ago he got raided. Um, it's been, it's, I, I took it as the Cowboys Cowboys brass got rated like 15th ranked GM in the league, right? And Will McClay, I believe, is the number one personnel guy in the league. What I think brings us down is Jerry Jones, right? Jerry Jones brings his way, Jerry Jones brings the GM staff not, not doing free agency right. 
uh, not doing bro, trades, right? Bro, because stand, because really, stand, stand out of the camera, bro. Say it again. Stand out of the camera. Stay out of the camera. Say it, yeah. So, Chark, I couldn't agree with you more, but he ain't going nowhere, right? He ain't going nowhere for so real. All, all, all I can do every week on Friday is talk about what's going on. Um, tell y'all, tell y'all, like, hey, y'all could be mad about it, right? But, um, Bro, the they're day, talking the about day. Shador Sanders out here. This is how you know we all out of whack. Because I've been listening to these live streams. I've been so busy. Like, you know, I haven't been, been doing the lives and stuff. I've been, you know, y'all already know. But just listening to these live streams, they've been talking about Shador Sanders. Some people have been talking about Michael Penix. I'm like, oh, man, we <laughs> we on our way, y'all. <laughs> because I just think that, you know, just hearing things like that, this team is not far away. But it's a red flag when you lose so many players. It just seems like that, you know, things are about to start changing. You know what I'm saying? So I, I see why they, you know, bringing up quarterbacks and stuff. Right. It's, I mean, it's it, unfortunately, unfortunately, however you want to look at it, right? <laughs> it's time to look at quarterbacks. And that's just the writing on the wall. Oh, it's yeah. Let me look. send this link, man. Let me see. Go, go ahead, Rob. Yeah. It's just the writing on the wall, man. Um, You know, you don't have to be happy. I, I'm not necessarily happy with it. I, would, I love Dak, right? But, he, he's two and five in the playoffs at the end of the day. Two and, and five. Two, he's two and five. Two and five, two and five bro. Yeah. I, I want him to be five and two. I want a championship. I want I, I want Dak to be the quarterback of the Cowboys until he retires. And look, Rob, but I'll be it don't get me wrong. We're passionate fans, bro. Like we're passionate fans, bro. We're like we be doing this content stuff, talking about cowboys for hours and hours and hours when people be sleep hours and hours and we're so dedicated to this team. We just want to see these guys put it out there on the field. So now that's why I say we got to keep it real with ourselves. We can't be the delusional fans. We got to keep it 100 emoji. We got to. Got to. Got to keep it 100. Got to keep it 100 emoji. Yeah. All right. Hey, shout out to D Block. What's good? D Block, man. What's going on? D Block. Man, what's good, man? I ain't seen you in a minute, huh? What's good? All right. Shout out to Dwayne. He said, um, leave Tyler Smith at guard. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it, isn't it easy to protect the tackle with the guard than a guard with the tackle? Leave him at guard. You got it, bro. I'll let you hold. Isn't it easy to protect the tackle with the guard? I think it's actually the other way around. But that I, I I could be I could be saying that just because I'm so used to Tyron Smith and and him having to protect that left guard for the last decade. Um, uh, I, I mean. I'm not. I think, I, see, I, I think it works both ways. I, I mean, I think left tackle is harder to play. That's why. Guard. That's why. This. This is why I say this, bro. I'm literally about to like this is this little debate right here because it's fifty fifty, and um, I'm looking at the guard. I mean, he. We know that he's an absolute beast at that guard position. He's an all pro. We already know what it is. But just like you said, that tackle position is extremely important. Who plays the tackle, Dwayne? That's the thing. Who plays the tackle? Do we trust these left tackles to come in here? Rookies with full time moves. You got the, um, what's the other dude's name? J uh, Jordan Morgan. You got those guys. Even though I think these guys can be good players, but how much can we trust these guys? That's what I was talking to about, with uh, talking about it with uh, John Mashoda. You know what I mean? But my thing is, I've seen Tyler Smith play that left tackle position. He was drafted to be a left tackle. I respect that being a left guard and getting an all pro position, but that blind side is everything. It's everything. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to just throw that out there. Hopefully they can get it right with that left tackle position. You, That's the most important position on the offensive line. You know, so. Right. And Tyler Smith has proved that he could play left tackle. He played that his rookie year, right? Um, I'm sure he could go out there and be, you know, have an all-pro performance at left tackle. Um, I'm up, It just depends on what your answers are then for left guard and what your answers are for left tackle on where I want to have them. I, I would prefer to have them at left guard because I feel like if you're an all-pro or something, just stay all-pro here, please. And I don't have to worry about you for the next 10 years, right? It's a fair argument, bro. It's definitely, it's 50-50, sure. it's bro. Like, to be sure. honest with you, some people are going to say being at, let's stay at left guard. I feel as though that he needs to kick out at left tackle because it extreme how important it is and what I saw from guys like TJ Bass, even though if he's not the guy, I just think that you can be able to find a solid guard versus going out there. I think that if if Tyler Smith was in his draft class right now, he would be the best left tackle in this draft class right now. 
So right. that's why it's kind of hard for me. I'm kind of I'm, I'm torn. I understand where you're coming from, uh, Dwayne, but you know that type of position is huge. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. All right. Um. Okay. Let's. So, what's your thoughts, bro? As far as TJ Bass. I mean, that's why that's why we're even having the conversation with Ty Smith moving out to tackle because mm-hmm. I think TJ Bass can play. Um, I think he could. Be, I could think. I think he could step in at left guard um, and maybe not have like an all pro year like Tyler, but I feel like we'll, we'll have a good offensive line with him at guard. Um, I, I I would probably. I would probably still want to do Tyler at guard and go get go get my next tackle in the draft depending on who's available um or like to, yeah i think i want to i think I, would, I think i still want to leave tyler smith at guard and go get a tackle in the draft mm-hmm. that's just my that's just my that's just my first inclination mm-hmm. um but i mean we're in rebuild mode man like so like we're gonna have a whole bunch of options um i think we need to trade down and get as much talent in the room as possible Mm-hmm. And, you know, go I, mean, from there. I, I just think that you know with uh you know I, I i did the video on brock hoffman that was real fun you know what i'm saying being able to just look at his college tape i still have some more tape of him uh, that i didn't even put on the video this is i mean this was fun but the thing is just seeing him playing that center position uh we'll see we'll see how it all plays out with him but they might end up still going out there and picking up a center as well in the first round Remember, we were talking about this. The second round, third round, fourth round, you could be able to find talent. But, you know, the mean streak coming from Brock Hoffman, what this guy did last year at that guard position, uh, just because he was an undrafted player, you can be able to go out there and find gems. You can find this player going up against guys like Dwayne Carter. You can find him against Jalen Phillips. The stuff that people don't see, that's what you want to see from this guy. But the main thing is, can he be consistent? Um, what mistakes is he making out there? You know, you got to tell the truth from this guy. But the thing is with him, I think that he can be something good, but he's he just got to prove it once you get to training camp. But it's going to come down to how much the coaches really trust in him because if they trust him, they might not go, go out there and go get a JPJ. They might not go get a Frazier or anybody, any of those other centers out there. They might, you know, stick with a tackle or something like that, just like you said, Rob. Right, right. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. Hey shout, hey, shout out to my man, Dwayne, for the $10, man. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much for the love, bro. Thank you. Thank you. He said, Tyler at tackle would be good with the veteran guard, not a rookie, but rookie tackle, he needs to be, be he, he needs to be a guard. Yeah, man. That's why I, man, it's, it's, it's so, it's so crazy. Cause I would want it. Yeah. If, if, if I got, if I got. Tyler Smith, because Tyler Smith is an older player now. You know what I'm saying? So he's a little, well, not old, but you know, he's he's a vet now. So I would want him. I mean, the guard position, I don't know, man. Either either a, a rookie, but you know, it's kind of hard to say that because you want to have a veteran center. So I kind of understand where you're coming from, bro. Because we're gonna have a younger center too, as well, bro. This whole offensive line, bro, is gonna be completely young. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and like and like honestly, um, so w- w- the young, the young age of the Cowboys. Cool. Appreciate is, you, bro. The young age of the Cowboys is coming, and we just have to be prepared for it. Um, mm-hmm. Luckily, like you know, M- Mike is going to be like the new Wiley vet, right, in a year or two, right? Zach Martin only has what one, two more years left. Uh, it's looking like Dak's going to be gone after next year, right? Um, you got you still got CD. Um, you know, you still got my man Jake Ferguson. Best tight end in the NFC. Best tight end in the NFC. Hey, but could you imagine how clear the cap will be if they don't end up signing a lot of these guys, bro? It's like a complete start over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the thing that's so crazy is, like, it will still be the same kind of cycle because we all know that the Dallas Cowboys, they love their guys. That's just their energy. So eventually, the new guys that they're bringing in, they're going to want to sign those guys. And it'll be like the same type of cycle, bro. I just right. think that, you know, with Micah, CeeDee Lamb, Dak, just if just just keep these guys, you know what I'm saying? Just keep them, you know what I'm saying? I, I know I'm talking about the whole rebuild, letting guys go and stuff like that. That's not what I really, really want to do. But at the same time, if they're going to clean it up, just go ahead and get it out the way. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Because because the worst thing the worst thing to be in the NFL is being limbo 
right? And, and playing just, with it. And just, being like a, just being a mediocre team every year. I hate that shit. If you're going to yeah. be bad for you, just go and be bad, right? Get it out the way. Right? Pop out. Get out the cap space, be bad, whatever, and then rebuild quickly, right? And I and I believe that's what we're trying to get ready to do. Um, you're going to, uh, if, if we don't make the Super Bowl this year, right? Um, you're going to have a new coach and a new quarterback, right? And that new coach and new quarterback are going to have a lot of flexibility in the cap, right? And we're going to have um, our full repertoire of, of draft picks. And mm-hmm. we already have, and we still have a good young core. Tyler, Micah, CD, yeah. Ferguson, Diggs, Bland. Um, yeah. You know, we still have we still have good young pieces. Sam Williams, right? So you feel um, good? You feel good about the cornerback position going into the draft? I feel, I feel great about the, we have, we have Trayvon Diggs coming back. Yeah, but still, you, I, I think that you know St- Trayvon Diggs coming off that in, uh, injury is still wide open to me, bro. You can't never have enough corners. You know sure. what I'm saying? Sure. You want to make sure because you got to think about it. We we don't have Stephon Gilmore, Javon Curry, even though he was not even all that, but he's not there anymore. So you want to continue to keep drafting guys. Maybe pick somebody up in free agency. I don't know who's out there. I mean, they don't, they picking up scraps, but you got to have a body. It's very important. That's why I was asking. Um, probably not the first round or the second round, but if you can be able to find a guy in the third round, fourth round, we will be breaking more guys down so you guys can check out the secondary as well. We got to keep this wide open at this point, Rob. Yeah. I mean, I, I just feel like, you know, in, in terms of positions that we need, it's O-line, yeah. it's, it's front seven. Um, yeah. That's where we need to concentrate at. We need to get bigger, stronger, tougher there. Um, yeah. You know, we still have a plethora of weapons yes. on the outside, right? Yes. For all, for all you Jalen Tolbert lovers, he's he's still he's gonna be the third wide receiver, right? Um, you know, we're, man, we're still... he got. Hey, listen, man, <laughs> at this point right now, he got he got one more year with me, bro. He got one more. <laughs> week, uh, one he's more. Like, oh, I'm, more I'm, not, I'm not rocking, bro. I'm not rocking. Just like my man Choctaw, Choctaw, I be I be seeing the stuff he be putting on Twitter, like like you can't be out here. Is Choctaw coming on? Is Choctaw coming on? I, I don't think he coming on. Yeah, I don't think he coming on. I sent the link, though. Hey, make sure y'all smash that like button, too, man. Make sure. Let's beat this algorithm. I'm almost at 4,000 subscribers, man. We've been hitting hard. We've been hitting hard, man. We, we don't come up right now. You know what I'm saying? So trying to get these live streams together, you know, got to beat that algorithm. But as far as the videos, you already know what it is. But let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Right, my man said, I can. Yeah, I sent the link, bro. I sent the link before we get yeah, out of here, man. Yeah, come holler at us real quick. All right, let's see. Uh, Because we ain't had nobody on, you know, and uh, uh one, you know, the, our fans, you know what I'm saying? God, come tap in with his dog. Definitely miss y'all. I mean, I, mean, I, I, you know, I know me and JC just be having fun out here. We just be rapping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, yo, yo, I've been calling JC two, three times a day. Uh, yo, been, yo, you been blowing me up. Such, this such, dude me off. You been blowing me man. up, though. All right. Hey, what's good, dog? Talk to you all, baby. Hey, what's, what's, what's going on, man? It's been a long time, man. How you been, bruh? Uh, I've been busy. I've been good, though. Hey, I know you were telling me about your son uh, playing basketball, I think, right? What did you tell me about that? Um, uh, he was- yeah, it's season over. It's season over. They won that little championship or whatever. Oh, for real? So it's been key- it, it kept you a little bit busy? Uh, yeah, but it, nah, it's just work and stuff and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Hey, look, hey, hey, bro, Cha-Cha, you ain't tell me that uh, Twitter be acting like that, bro. They what be, you mean? Bro, they be tweaking on Twitter, man. It's like a war. Everybody is so many different personalities. It's so much different heat going left and right as far as the Cowboys, bro. It's crazy on Twitter, bro. Man, listen, I don't, I don't, I don't get into that stuff because you know me, man. You know how I feel. So I don't really let that stuff bother me, you feel me? Because like I tell people, man, like it really kind of don't matter, you know, Everybody like, man, but we can't really do nothing about that. Like I said, bro, can't complain. Uh, when Dak walks and he goes somewhere else and he do better, then, then what? Because it's a pattern. It's a pattern. We can't say, oh, well, he's not going to do it. Well, every star player that Dallas has had over the past 20 years, they won a Super Bowl elsewhere. Bro, so, that, bro, if that if something like that happened, bro, my heart, I will be heartbroken. Heartbroken. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. Years. I wouldn't be because for one, 
Chakta, the fans don't, don't like they, that. They, they, no way, Chakta. I'm gonna be heartbroken, bro. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be because I will be happy for him. Why? Be because the fans don't like Dak Prescott. Yeah, Jerry or Steven, one of the two don't like that press guy. So I would not be as upset as everyone else because for one, he was never wanted. You can't get mad because somebody else looked at the ring and found it that it was a shiny piece, but we looked at it like trash. Yeah. Uh, we, we can't get mad. See, but the thing because is they came up on a diamond. And we use that diamond like it was a gold piece. We can't get mad. So you think that this team is like full rebuild mode? Are you feeling that type of energy, Choctaw? Go ahead, rebuild. The future not bright. The future is not bright. Now that quarterback, it's not. It's not bright right now. You know, I'm scouting. You know, I do this. It's not really bright right now. The quarterback position probably ain't going to get good until 2028. God, yeah, hold on, guys. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. I forgot my little, uh, damn, I forgot my little, oh, yeah, hold on. Hold on. Wait a Why you say that, Chuck Tom? That's because, long, because, 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 man, listen, man, I'm looking at all these coaching trees throughout the country, starting through Pee Wee, through high school and college. Nobody is taking the time out to teach these kids no more. They're not. They're not teaching them properly. That's why you get a lot of busts more so nowadays than you ever did before. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. I'm a coach. I'm a coach. So I'm watching this stuff. I'm, I'm watching film across the nation. I'm looking at these kids. A lot of them. And I'm just like, who's teaching these kids? So let me ask you real quick. I want to ask you real quick. So is there any of these quarterbacks that you like? I just want this wild question. Is there any of these quarterbacks that you like coming out of this draft? Just want to know your thoughts on that. I ain't talking to you. I'm going to put it this way. I think Jay Daniels has the most upside. Caleb Williams has the natural talent potential. Drake May is a project. I watch Michael Penix. I'm not highly care for, careful uh, for dude because he has Rob so much did. talent around him. Rob was gassing him, young. Rob was gassing him. <laughs> man, listen, bro. Listen, bro. I watch this dude, Michael <laughs> Penix. Man, I watch this dude. I watch this dude, Michael Penix, with the old Ohio State OC that had Marvin Harrison and all those dudes open all day. As a head coach, could not do nothing with that same type of playbook. Yeah. Crumble. Yeah. I'm talking about crumble. Like, literally walked off in the middle of the game. Man, ugh. I'm just like, bro, he's a bum. <laughs> so, a okay. Bum. All right. Okay. So, as far as you, Captain Rob, you said that he did run a 4 5, the quarterback. So, you said that you do like <laughs> Penix, right? When I look at Michael Penix, I see, I see. <laughs> I see the ball jump off his hands. I see, I see natural throwing motion. I see, oh, what? I, I see, I see, po- I see, I see, um, poison the pocket with, um, and he can extend plays. I think with every quarterback that goes in the National Football League, it depends on the talent around him and depends on the coaching that he gets, right? If Caleb Williams goes to, you know, let's just say he didn't go to Chicago, or, or let's say he's going to Chicago with like a, with, with a with like old Chicago old, old Chicago thought process, right? He might bust, right? Um, oh, he bust. J- Justin Fields, Justin Fields is just there, and people still have high hopes for Justin Fields because they see the talent, but they just know he was surrounded by trash, right? Mm-hmm. I think every go ahead, Charto. Nah, he agree. I, he no, I'm agreeing. Yeah, 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 I'm oh, agreeing. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so I um, for me, for me. I think about it just a little bit differently. I think quarterbacks in today's age, they could they, they go through so many more repetitions of mm-hmm. the quarterback positions than quarterbacks of yesterday, right? Through all the seven on seven camps and all the just 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 the just 
just the more throwing attempts that they get growing up, right? So I think there's actually more busts like yesterday, like if you go back and really count it up, right? Mm -hmm. But there, there are there are much higher expectations of quarterbacks, right? Yep. Because everybody's looking for Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. And right? you're not gonna it's not that and sweet. you're not gonna get it. You're yeah. not gonna get it, right? So but, all I'm saying but, about all I'm saying about when it comes down to our situation with Dak, it's we've we've now have nine years of Dak Prescott and he's had such tremendous years and I love Dak. But at the, at the end of the day, there's no ring. And if I'm about winning rings, I'm not about getting to the playoffs, right? So if I know, I'm, I'm done with if, that. If I if I know that year in and year out he's not going to do it, it's just time for me to start over, right? So I, am I am I mad at Jerry and them for for hating him? I'm not mad. I'm mad at the situation. I'm mad that we haven't won, right? I'm mad that. I'm mad that Dak didn't have a better playoff game, right? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I'm, I'm not mad at any one particular player. Like it's not anybody's fault, really. But I, I, I'm just an optimistic, dude. So like, I, I feel like, like the question mark in the future is a brighter light than what we have now, especially since the writing's really on the wall. So Rob, let me ask you this real quick. Do you think that something went down like during their whole negotiating, you know, with, with his agent, that's something that we don't know about? Because the thing is like, when you get to the draft, I don't know, it could have been something that went left. And then next thing you know, Dallas going out there and taking a leap. That's why I say at this point right now, they're doing so many abnormal eccentric things that we're not accustomed to like bro i mean we've lost so many players and we have not added anybody they i believe i believe they, they literally know that we're not better from last year bro but do you think something went down you know with dak jerry jones the, his agent and then sure. you know just went left and, and this is and this is and, and this is my opinion this is just speculation i believe that dak prescott agent so i'm just gonna say dak prescott whatever dak prescott went to jerry jones Right and said, I finished with 36 touchdowns, led the league, and nine picks, and I had a second team, second team All Pro, which technically is the second best quarterback in the league for the 2024 season. And it is my turn. My contract's up again. It's my turn to get paid again, and I won 60 million dollars. And then Jerry said, "But with all that, you threw two picks in the first half of the Green Bay game, and you couldn't get me out the first round." with your most talented team that you've had. So I I don't want to give you 60 million. I want to put your feet to the fire and I want you to go win me a Super Bowl um, and then you can write your own paycheck, right? So I believe Dak wanted more money and Jerry was just like, I can't do it again. First of all, Dak never really, Jerry never really wanted Dak in the first place. Jerry's still mad about the last negotiations. So right? if that's the case, then won't you just cut off the whole trading clause and trade them then, right? Well, the no trade clause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If but can't you cut that off though? If he if he agreed, if Dak if agreed. he agreed, but he's not going to agree because because so when people say Dak has all the leverage, really, in my opinion, Cowboys still have a lot of leverage because sixty million or mm. 50, fifty million dollars. Just hear me out. Fifty million dollars in Dallas is different from fifty million dollars in Tennessee, right? Dak doesn't want to play quarterback. What you, talking, else. What you talking about, like, because of taxes and stuff? Because because of taxes, one and endorsement, second, it is much more profitable to be the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, right, than the quarterback of the Jacksonville Jaguars, right? Um, there's 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 levels to this, right? And 60, 60, 60 or you know whatever the number whatever the number is, it hits different. It hits different in Dallas than it does in in Nashville right or houston right yep. or or somewhere else right so when people say dak has all the leverage yes he has the no trade clause right but but now but now look at it jerry's like yo um okay cool you have all the leverage go hit free agency yeah i want to see which team pays you 60 million dollars Hey, shout out to Joe Gonzalez. What's I, going I, on? I, I know 25, hey, Jimmy. Shout out real quick, yo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, shout out to Joe Gonzalez. This is the first time you came in here. I've seen you in a lot of different streams. Welcome to the JC Lounge. You'll see a lot of good stuff over here. Welcome, welcome. All right, go ahead, bro. But but, but what I was about to say was, I know 25 teams that would. Three of them in our division. Three of them in our division. And Dak does have the leverage. 
because nobody told you to get rid of Amari Cooper for Michael Gallup when you could have built on top of what we had instead of getting rid of people. Nobody oh, told y'all yeah. to get rid of the linebackers. I can't stop yeah. a team while throwing the ball and go out there and run it, block it, and do all that stuff. Nobody said to go get a Chuma Adoga and put him at left tackle instead of left guard. Left Nobody man. said these things. Man. You did these things. You did these things. You yeah. took from my plate and didn't let me eat. That's why I don't have a ring. You yeah. don't want to step down as a GM and help the team and help the franchise and make the fans happy. You rather just be out there and worry about what, what advertisement Advertise. and money. Mm -hmm. That's all you care about. So he yes, does. that does have the leverage. He has every a hundred percent right to get mad. He has a hundred percent and every right to do what he do. I don't go to the media and downplay you. You go to the media and downplay every player you got. Yeah. So the right. Why so do you think nobody don't want to come to Dallas? That's why I said, bro, it's over for Dallas. Don't nobody want to play there. Mm -hmm. Other I mean, I, players I, I, see I, I, this. I, I would. I, I don't know. I wouldn't go that far though. I think that. You know, okay. So so see, tell so bro, tell bro, me bro. this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hear me out real quick. Hear me out real quick. So you telling me you seen what happened to you? You are big as Elmari Cooper. You seen what happened to him because he spoke out against the game plans and he ain't take a jab. So you see, you get mad. You send me to Cleveland where I still do the same stuff for a fifth round. That's no longer in the league. Nah, my, Bro, my players my, see this. Yeah, my that's argument, bad. That's bad business, man. See, the thing is, I I don't know. I don't know. I I don't agree with that. I think that players would like to come play in Dallas, but we don't got bread, bro. We don't Man. have. We're not. We're not managing. Oh, no. Right? We no. Don't have I don't think so. I don't think so because we do got the bread. You just gotta learn how to move it around. You gotta <laughs> learn how to move it around. You got the <laughs> money. That falls on. Let Jerry. me piggyback. Hey, Chart, let me. Hey, Chart, let me piggyback on that. JC, at the beginning of this offseason, right after the Green Bay game, right, I was even mad because I was like, "Yo, bet, right." We can create, we can create sixty three million dollars in cap space. Oh my right? god! But by, yeah. by, yeah. by, by, remember by, you were talking about? You it. remember I had my whole, I had my whole free agency. <laughs> yeah. I was like, boom, yo, hey, um, yo, but that's the uh, that's the oh, all in oh, mindset, oh. though. Throw that in there. That's the all in yeah. mindset, right? But I was like, I was, yeah, that's all in mind. I was like, yo, restructure deck, extend CD, um, mm -hmm. um, um, restructure Zach Martin, restructure yep. D Law, um, yep. cut Michael Gallup. Do yep. this, do that. Bring in two linebackers. Yep. Give me a defensive tackle. Boom, yep. Let's go. Let, let's go make one, one, one more good run at this with sixty-three million dollars in cap space. Yep. But we didn't do it, right? No. My only thing on that is that I don't like harping on the past, right? I can I don't control the Dallas Cowboys. Exactly. I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying. Charlie, 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 it seems like it, it feels like we're disagreeing, but we're really on the same page, right? We might yeah. disagree on the leverage and, and the rights of Dak Prescott. I, I believe. I believe his right to be angry is different from his leverage, but that's just meant some words, whatever. But we're, we're on the same page with Dallas Brass could have done a lot more with this squad going to 2025. Yep. And it's a detriment. And I believe, and I believe that's, that's all. It was almost like Jerry Jones was in on his feelings over the green Bay laws oh, yeah. is, instead of looking towards the future. <laughs> but, but, I can't all do anything right, about that. I can't do anything about that. Hey, all you, I can do, all I can do, is scout quarterbacks. Okay. All right. Look. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So where do where do we go from here, Rob? Talk. Talk. Give me y'all mindset. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but this is the thing. This this yeah. this is what I was gonna say because I was gonna piggyback off of what Rob said. Yes. Jerry, I'm not going to say so much Jerry, because if it was up to Jerry, we will have more. It's really Steven. It's like him. Steven, Steven is telling us in, in our face in, in the interview, like, yeah, if it wasn't for my dad, we nah. wouldn't. Woo, woo, woo. And it's just like, dang, bro. So when your dad go, you know, you get in the team, bro. You basically mm -hmm. not going to care. Cause you never won nothing. You don't know how to do anything. Do so my thing is, yeah, hell yeah, they was mad because they heard the fans mad. They listen to everything. They check in on new media. 
They, they know everything. They, they, they only a they, click away. They do, bro. I keep telling y'all. They and listen like to they, y'all. They, it feels they, like they just be ignoring us, Charlie. Talk. They right. do. They, they 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 ignore y'all. But the only thing they ignore is the positive stuff. They love it when y'all be like, "Yes, get rid of that Prescott, please." Cut Zeke. Oh, he's taking too much money. Like we pay for these players. And they do exactly what the fans are asking. The fans ask for a complete rebuild after <laughs> Green Bay. Hey, listen. To now say. they're doing it. Everybody's in the uproar. No, bro, you asked for this. I sat back and went on every live stream, every channel, and looked at every comment, went on every Twitter page, and I watched every freaking Cowboy fan rebuild. Hey, shout out to Serotonin. He said, Steven calls him Jerry. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. You know, that's how you know. That's how, yeah, you know you really from a hey, look, hey, Rob, that's how you know he ready to take over, bro. Yeah. He is. He's he ready. He ready to take over. Like, He's ready Jerry? to take over and do it his way. He like, thinks yeah. doing it his yeah, way is gonna get him a dub. No, bro, you gonna be you gonna be lost in the sauce, bro. Yeah, see, that's the thing. You just gotta, you gotta, you gotta have that energy to go out there and just get it done. So, give me your thoughts, bro. As far as like Eric Kendricks, what's your thoughts on this linebacker? I do like Eric Kendricks, but I just think that you know you have to bring in more at that linebacker this, position. We know this, LVP this. from last year; he ended up you know hurting his neck and all that and all that stuff. So, bringing in more linebackers is gonna be important, bro. Man, oh, let me this is the thing. on that question. Let me pick you back on that question. Go, go ahead, Rob. I'm about yeah. to mute up. Go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 no. I want to piggyback on JC's question to, to you, Chuck Talk. Uh, what do you think about Kendricks? And then also, what, where, how do you feel he? So, uh, so Vegas still has us at a 10 and a half, 10 and a half wins. Do you think, Chark, uh, do you think Eric Kendricks and our revamped, revamped defense? Is gonna to get to eleven? Are, are we over or under ten and a half wins? I get before you, Chuck Talk. You got Dak Prescott. You got Dak Prescott and CD Lamb. So of course you're gonna get ten plus wins. They carried. They carried the team. They carried the team for uh, eleven games. Eleven games straight. They carried the team because yep. where was the defense when we needed them on a lot of those things? Yep. That Cutting Prescott up. and CD Lamb had to go out there and win the games for us. Where was his defense? Hey, hey, but you know what, Rob? Michael Parsons, defense, where you at? Defense, well, the defense is going to have its good games. They just cut up towards the end. That's why I believe that when it I, matters most. Yeah, when it matters most. So, but the offense ain't ain't going nowhere, bro. Offense going to be fireworks. Yep. And Look, but the we thing, fall out of bed. Right now, we they, fall out of bed and score five hundred points. Yeah, yeah, but but think about this one too, Rob and JC. We need to run it back. We need to run it's back. not gonna matter if you still got Scott McCurley as the linebacker coach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because everybody talked trashed about Damone last year, but was Damone playing like that in 2022? No. We was hyping him up. Oh my God, he's hitting. He's shooting gaps. He's doing this because the linebacker coach was teaching him right. You got a tight end coach talking about linebacker. No, bro. That does not work. You better off having me teach these dudes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Fair Tony Cowboy. He said we need a running back. We definitely need a running back, bro. That's one thing that we definitely do need. But you you can pick them up in the second round, the third round. Um, definitely not first round. I don't see that happening. But you can be able to get talent all throughout there. But this offense as a whole, brother, I just think that with everything we got, the Jake Ferguson's, if they can figure it out, that's why we've been dissecting that offensive line. Chalk talk. Give me your mindset when it comes down to the offensive line real quick. Do you feel as though you would want to keep Tyler Smith at that left guard position? I don't know if I caught your comment or not. Or would you want to put him at that left tackle position? Because this is what it all comes down to. All the it, things trickle down with Brock Hoffman playing center, possibly. Then you got to talk about TJ Bass. So what's your thoughts as far as, far as so, offensive line? So I'm going to tell you what I did. I know it's mad and everybody, but I'm going to tell you what I did when Zach Martin retired and Tyra Smith was no longer there. I love it. I love it. First of all, I, I already love it. I already love so it. I did, I moved, I did <laughs> move Tyler Smith over to the left, the left tackle because it's easier to slide over when you already know that side than to go and put somebody that's never been there or never done it. See, Tyler Smith did it in 2022. So 
We know that he can do it. I don't care about the penalty or nothing. He was a rookie. I don't care about that. Rookie mistakes. The dude bro, is a beast. Bro, I got that's that's my next video, bro. That's yeah. my next video. I got I got to break it down. You, you, I'm you telling know. you, I'm telling you, JC. I will move him right there. I will let I will let Brock Hoffman grow. I will let Brock Hoffman grow and TJ Bass grow. You never know. These dudes could be some gold jacket dudes just sitting there, and we're not letting them play. You cannot get better sitting on a bench. You have to. You have to get your battle scars. See, but here's the thing, though, Chalk. Do you think that's why they let Tyron? Hold on, hold on, one second, Rob. No, I still, I still no. want to be able to draft offensive linemen, though. You, even but, if it's early, don't make but, none but, of these guys comfortable, bro. Because but we don't JC, know. But we JC, don't know. what do I say all the time? What do I say yearly? What Cowboys should do yearly? Stay drafting the offensive line, I'm, I'm sure. Bro, I say they need to draft and focus on trenches every, oh, every year, year on both sides. Four it doesn't, back. it Three. don't matter. It don't matter offense, offensively or defensively. You Can't do it enough. on both sides. Mm -hmm. You Can't do it enough, yearly, man. man I'm right. telling you. Shout out to Freight Train. What's good, Freight Train? What's good, dog? Yes, sir. If Will but, McClay, yeah, but, but, that, but yeah, man, I'm gonna be a three or four, a fourteen team. That's what he said. Oh man, man I don't McClay know. I don't know, man. Um, my birthday is on the draft week. I should slide out there to the to the D because it's only like two hours away from where I'm at. So I should just slide out there and see what people talking about because, like I said, bro. If they want to continue to keep being cheap and keep being like, yeah, we're going to get the guys that we repaired their injuries or we're going to get the guys that uh, never really got snaps or they was hurt all the time and the teams don't want them. But I don't I don't expect Dallas to do anything. That's why I was telling y'all last year, like lower your expectations. Please lower your expectations. Did I not say that, JC? I told you about Monty. I said, yo, y'all got to stop hyping, hyping Buddy up. He's going to take some time because he never did what Dallas has is asking him to do at Michigan. I watch college way more than I do NFL. And because not why? That, that's the future of the NFL. Either. And he's not a three technique neither, bro. So the thing he's is, not. these one techniques... Usually these one techniques do not get picked in the first round, bros. It takes time for some of these dudes. Leverage, you know, getting into the playbook, little things like that. Three technique is pass, rush, rushing the passer. That's that's good money right there. I'm not saying it's easy, but at the same time, it's a transition. So we're, we're going to see with Mozzie, bro. We're definitely going to see. But I think but that you, gotta, you can still I'll go out there and draft, though, Chata. Okay. Yeah, but think about this, JC. We're in 2024. There's not so much generational talent coming out in those positions. Not yeah, no more. But you know, you I, might you know, get one or two every now and then, like a uh Vita Vea or a, even a, a, you don't a even Donald, but both of those dudes came on in like their fourth year. And but the thing is, you don't need to have a generational talent, and I know you know that as far as the oh, defense. Oh, line. yeah, oh, yeah, that oh, yeah. Guy, bro. You don't have to have the best generational guy. If you can get guys that can get in the way and allow your linebackers to roam and just know how to get in the right spots and don't get sucked in, I think you'll be fine. You know yeah, what I'm saying? but when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys, man, those players tend to fizzle out in Dallas real quick, bro. And we hey, get we rid can, of them too quick. We get we rid of them too quick before we give them a chance. Oh, Hannah. We can have yeah, yeah, oh, Hannah. All I'm, yeah. saying, all I'm saying is with my $63 million, we could have got a DJ Reader for thirteen mil a year. We could have <laughs> got Grover Stewart, you know, yeah. for eleven mil a year. Yeah, you, know, you don't have to find them all in the draft. You can go free agency. You don't have to only like our guys. There's other Man. good NFL players in the league. It is the NFL. That's why it's the best league on earth. Is because there's riddled with talent everywhere, and everybody's so constantly. Always looking for money in new teams and whatnot. So, so Rob, Rob, they liking their guys is only getting them to the divisional round. They gotta switch <laughs> up energy, bro. They gotta switch up. It looks good in the regular season, bro. But you, if, oh, if anything, it don't even really look that good in the regular hold on, season. Hold on. It, I mean, yeah, as far as the record, you know what I'm saying? Record looked pretty. But at the same time, go get two or three difference makers mm. in, in free agency. That mm. could help, bro. It could, man. And that's the thing, like, 
like I said, like I said before, you know, everything unfolded. I told a lot of fans, I said the only way Dallas can get over the hump is they have to hit free agency. They have no choice and they have to hit it on both sides. Yep. They don't do it. So I don't like I said, I don't I don't I don't really expect much from from the Cowboys. You know what I mean? Like uh Man, break my heart, Chata. But I don't you, mean man. it. I don't mean it in a bad way. It's just, it's just over the over these past years since twenty since Dak has came back from getting his ankle ripped in half to save this franchise. Um, they just keep taking pieces away yearly, and it's like, bro, you're not, you're not going to get nowhere doing that, like. You have to build on type of build. Some of those dudes that we let go, you weren't going to pay much for those guys, man. You weren't going to pay that much for Ezekiel Elliott after telling more than crumbled him and Tony Pollard career real quick in one year. That's all it took was two years of Kellen Moore and Dallas run game disappeared. But see, that's the thing. Instead of firing certain coaches, they could have asked Scott Linehan to be the run game coordinator because he know how to build up a run game. Scott Linehan. But he know how to build up a run game. We had an unstoppable, but we had an unstoppable run game with him as the run game coordinator. I mean, dating the, the, all the way back had, to Lamar, DeMarco Murray, man. You also had you also had like four four Hall of Famers in like the run game. You had you had yeah your three linemen and Zeke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but it was like that with DeMarco Murray. He was still there with DeMarco Murray. That, that, I mean, that's offensive line, dog. That's like that's no, Zach, that's Travis, that's, that's Tyron, who? that's Ronald Leary. Yeah, that's but three. but guess who? But guess who he was working well with? Mark Colombo. Mark Colombo, he was a good. You don't get rid of a Mark. You don't get rid of a Mark Colombo. Hey, like That's Mark something Mark. that you don't do. You, you're, the line. See, guys like Terrence Steele will be so much better. We have Mark Colombo. Tyler Smith will be already. We already talking about gold jacket on him with a Mark Mark Colombo. We're talking about Tyler Beatis being the next Travis Frederick under with a Mark Colombo because. I don't care what nobody say. I watched this man, Tyler Beatis at Wisconsin, shut down a Joey Bosa, a Nick Bosa, and and uh, Chase Young. I watched him shut them boys down. Yeah. Who, who's this, Tyler Beatis, you said? Tyler Beatis. That's why I was so high on him, because I watched this man take top-tier talent and just dominate him. So yeah, yeah, he was he was pretty good, but I mean, I, I don't but know. Sometimes, but sometimes know. it, it doesn't shaky. always. Sometimes, bro, he was looking always, shaky. It doesn't sometimes. always translate and doesn't it, always stay. It, it's right? it's, it's all about JC, how you train these guys, though. You got to train them properly. I was just telling I was just telling JC this today. Like, you can't fall in love with guys expecting them to have twenty year careers, right? Oh God. Nah, yeah, I, I agree. Right. The, right. The, the you know like the Terrell Davis of the world, four year career done. Right. right, right, right. Troy Aikman, at the end of the day, was really only like a six-year guy, if you really think about it. Right, um, you, you, you can't you can't expect Tom Brady to fall fall out anyway. But so my question is, you know, it's March, it's March, it's March 29th, it's Easter weekend. Where do we go from here? What what, what are you doing first round, Chartal? Yeah, right well, before we uh, get out of here, you if, want, you, you want to do a quick March draft, JC, with Chartal? If, if 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 it was up to me, if it was if it was up to me, man, it's up to everybody, man. You know what I'm saying? Nah, you know, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like if it if it was really up to me, right? I will be. Uh, I would what what I would do is uh, probably office a line. I would probably go office a line, man. And uh, next round, you know, what I'm saying if it's the a nice uh, linebacker right there. It should be some good linebackers right there. Yeah. Uh, where we picking that? What fifty eight? I want to say. Yeah, fifty six. I think. Uh, if it's something there, I would. If not, then I would try to go running back. Um, 
because I know third, fourth round for sure, you're going to get some nice running backs or whatever. Or I will go receiver second round. If it's some guy like there, like a Xavier Leggett or a, I love Xavier Leggett. Love your mindset, bro. Cause I know, I know with me, bro. There's absolutely no way. I see my man, cool, cool. This is my first time seeing you in here. Shout out to you, bro. He said Brian Thomas and Adana, Adani Mitchell at 24, bro. I, I think those those guys are extreme talents. They, they are good talents. But if we end up going that way, bro, we're gonna fall right into the same rabbit hole with me. Cause it's like you, you just amping up the offense. You're just trying to make it look pretty. And just like you said, the offensive line. What about the offensive line? What about the defensive line? When you're playing against playoff teams, when games are important, it's going to get strapped, bro. Right. It's going to get strapped. You want to get the pretty boy picks, Brian Thomas, Adani Mitchell. I'm not saying that they, they're going to be bad players, but at the same time, when you get to the playoffs, when you play teams that got good trenches that can be able to run the ball, they're going to they're going to control you. That's how that's how that happens in the playoffs. So you want to right. get the pretty boy picks. That's on y'all. But as far as me, I think that the offensive line defensive line you got to be able to continue to keep addressing that linebacker that intrigues me as well because i i believe that Ed, 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 edger and cooper that dude is a dog bro that dude is uh, a dog. I, I like, like Ed, i like edger and cooper if he's like playing strong or whatever but as like a middle nah if 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 i want a middle linebacker and a lot of people don't know about this dude but I'm sorry. I watched this guy all four years. He never misses tackles. He shoots the gaps. He wraps up. He's a big dude. He's like 6'4", 265. Probably running like a 4'6". But he hits very hard. He calls fumbles. He gets sacks. And he played at a very small school. So, and it's Indiana. And the uh, reason why I know about this guy, because when Ohio State, every time he played Ohio State, this guy was just jumping I mean, jumping off the screen, bro. His name is Aaron Casey. He's a good, he's a solid middle linebacker that diagnosed very well. Um, just, I'm not sure what round you think this going to be because, I mean, with Eric Kendricks, he's going to be mad in that middle linebacker position will, for this year. I, I would do, I would do like fifth, fifth round with him, sixth round. You know, okay, late, late, late round flyer. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a late, a late round guy. Oh, uh, a lot of, I, I mean, a lot of people uh, talk about him, but I don't really talk about him as much because I, he really didn't stand out to me as like a guy that's just going to, you know, cover real well, but he can't stop the run. He can't help stop the run. Uh, he's posting. I think Junior Costa, you could probably get him in like the fifth, fourth yeah. round. You know what yeah. I mean? Later rounds. I like see, Junior Costa. I did a you video. Know, those you are know. the type of guys I will be looking at for later rounds. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I said we move up. I doubt we're going to move up, bro. I'm, I'm capping trade down. down. Yeah, I'm capping trade I'm down. 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 Like, go I'm, back. I'm yeah. More the, yeah, I'm more the, the trade back game, you know. Trade back game. Yeah, I'm more the, the, the trade back game due to the fact that, um, you can see it, Rob. You can get so right? much more. You can get so much more if you play that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Trade back you, a few times. If, 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 yeah, I'm telling you. And you can see the talent, man. That's why the mocks are so fun. You know what I'm saying? Because there's so much talent within the, you know, second round and stuff like that. If you can be able to gain more value at this point right now, they are missing right. so many players in, at so many different positions. If they plan this right, if they move right and see the talent, then they can be able to move back. And I'm not saying move all the way out the first round because you still want to consider the first year option. You know what I'm saying? You know what we were talking about last live stream with Captain Rob. But the thing is, man, it just got to be wide open. Can we trade back and do the whole Travis Frederick thing back when he was drafted? Gain a third round pick um, and then possibly pick somebody in the interior on the offensive line. So it's going to be huge. It's definitely going to be huge. Final thoughts, um, Captain Rob, man. Where do we go from here, man? Before we get out of here. Embrace the rebuild. Um, it's going to be a tough year coming up, right? I don't think we're going to be a 12-1 season. I, I, I still think we're going to be a playoff team because we have Dak. We have probably one of the best um, receiving cores still um, um, in the NFC. Um, we still have a good secondary. I, I, the NFC East picked up a lot of people, but they still no one addressed their secondary, right? They still stank, right? And Dak is still and Dak is still good. Um, and uh, um, I, th I still think we're going to have a good team, right? 
and we still got good offensive linemen. We, we we're still a good team. Our, our depth is just low, right? Um, I, I think I think Coach Zimmer is going to put Micah at his correct position, or at least play more more at linebacker a little bit, right? Um, with still his pass rushing ability, right? So I think you're going to get a more versatile Micah, but just you got you got to go knock out this draft. But at least that's one thing we do do well is draft season, right? And that's that's we do drafts very well, right? We pick up a lot of good players. So I mean, I'm still, you know, we're not we're not gonna mop out this year. We're not gonna go. We're not gonna be in the, in the top ten draft pick next year, but we mm-hmm. win the championship. Mm-hmm. Big, I know, right? So that's why, man. It's going it's gonna be exciting though, because I mean, just like I said, man, we all love football, regardless, through and through. All the videos, all the content creators, what Dallas Cowboys do on the field, what they don't do, we just love football. And that's what it's all about. We're going to see, just like my man said, there's a possibility that they could be aggressive this draft. They might trade back. I don't think they're going to be trading up, but they got to do something, Cowboys Nation. It's going to be big. It's going to be good. Hopefully, uh, Choctaw, you tap in with us soon, man. This was definitely a good one. Shout out to my man, Marjay Smith. Yeah, Marjay Smith, the beginning of this live stream, man. He tapped in with us for a good 30, 35 minutes. Such a good guy, man. So make sure y'all tap in with him. He said that he'll, you know, he'll follow everybody that sent him love and stuff like that, man. So that's always good, y'all. All right, y'all. Oh, bro, really appreciate y'all for having me on. Thanks, Rob, man. Really appreciate you, bro. Yeah. All right, y'all. Love you, dog. Yeah. Love you, dog. All right. All right, yeah. JP, fam. All right, fam. I'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um,